Hi and welcome to my latest video in my series looking at uh, ground mounted vertical antennas, especially non-resonant ones. And what we're looking at in this video is does antenna length impact the DX performance of a typical ground mounted vertical? Now the typical sort of um, normal length if you like for a ground mounted vertical tends to be a quarter wave. But of course if you're using non-resonant vertical antenna then you'll be operating operating it on a way on a variety of different bands probably, which means it'll be a different length according to the fraction of a wavelength on those different bands. And we're going to see whether or not that impacts the DX performance or potentially anyway of your non-resonant ground-mounted vertical. So which angles actually matter? Which takeoff angles? Well, there's been plenty of data on this. Um, I found in ON4UN's seminal book, Low Band DXing, uh, Chapter 5 by Lou Gordon. He's K4VX. And he uh, highlighted data that's been modelled by the ARRL by N6BV and also based on information obtained from the uh, IONCAP and VOCAP systems. Indeed, the IONCAP data that uh, Lou highlighted was collected over a period of around 35 years on both 40 and 80 metres. So a substantial amount of data, as you can imagine. What the data looked at was, I managed to work out, was the uh, actual um, takeoff angle of received uh, signals across various different pathways across the globe. We looked at 40 and 80 meters, and we're going to look at the 40 meter data as our guide. And the two pathways we're going to highlight here, just initially, is from Europe, that's Belgium, to Japan, and again from Belgium to the States, across uh, W1 to W6, in fact. So looking at Europe to Japan, and what that uh, over three decades of data managed to tell, uh, tell us is that, first of all, in the top right-hand corner, as you can see in red, that the most popular angle for DX was about three degrees. If you look along the bottom, uh, those blue bars going up, uh, according to the various takeoff angles of received signals, one to five degrees, six to ten degrees, and so on. On the left, you've got the percentage of those signals received according to whichever um, angle, takeoff angle it was received by. So, for example, 1 to 5 degrees, as you can see there on the left, is about 46%. So, 46% of signals from Europe to Japan were received at around 40, uh, sorry, between 1 and 5 degrees. Around 24%, uh, 6 to 10 degrees, and about 27% or 28%, 11 to 15 degrees. As you can see there, from 16 to 20 and 21 degrees and above, very little. So clearly this tells us that the majority of DX, um, or the vast majority was under 15 degrees, but the majority of DX received signals were under, or 10 degrees or under. I came to a figure of around 70%. So that's quite a large amount. Similar but slightly different, Europe to US, now, the most popular angle there was 5 degrees, and it's a bit of a more even spread. Again, though, 1 to 5 degrees being the most popular sort of bunch, just over 30%. 6 to 10, 11 to 15, quite similar, as was 16 to 20 and 21 degrees and above. But again, if we categorise 1 through 10 degrees, that uh, comes to around about 50% of those signals. So typically then, if we're looking at the performance of a ground-mounted vertical in terms of its DX capabilities, we're going to look at takeoff angles at 10 degrees or below, and probably 5 degrees or below in terms of its ultimate performance. Now, this is what you'd expect from a quarter wave. This is modelled via MMANA. Little red mark on the side denotes, basically, the first 10 degrees of takeoff. And that's really what a quarter wave will give you. And at five degrees, you'd expect a performance of around minus six, something like that, dB. Keep that figure in mind. Now let's compare other lengths, longer lengths, of uh, a vertical as a fraction of a wavelength to the quarter wave. So for example, if we consider the quarter wave 
in red against a half wave vertical. If you look at that lower part, which I'll highlight here with the cursor, so one up to 10 degrees on the left there, you can see that the blue, which is the half wave, has a slight advantage. It'll be around a dB to dB and a half, a little bit better at those low angles than a quarter wave. Not substantial, but there's a slight advantage. Now, lots of people you see, when they, um, when they consider vertical take a sort of low angle performance, a lot of people seem to think that once an antenna goes beyond a half or a five eighths wave in length, that the takeoff angles become prohibitive. They sort of stop any decent performance at low angles. Now, if we consider the three quarter wave in blue, if you just looked at that three quarter wave, that's the blue one there on by itself, lots of people's eyes get drawn to the high lobes up here. And they think, well, look at the maximum gain of this antenna. That's up at about, what, 50 degrees, something like that? Uh, yeah, it's about 50 degrees, isn't it? And they think, well, that's useless then. That antenna is not going to be any good for DX. But of course, what they don't realize is that as we go down below here, look at this. The three-quarter wave does really, really well compared to the quarter wave. Look at the change there, the difference on the 10-degree takeoff angle, and even at 5 degrees, look. Everywhere, in fact. So the three-quarter wave is an excellent length for an antenna. And as we'll see in a minute, it's just below a three-quarter wave where we hit the sweet spot in terms of the gain we get at those low angles. When we get towards a full wavelength long, then we begin to see the quarter wave win out. So here again in blue, we have the full wave. So we have maybe a 10 meter long vertical for 10 meters, a 15 meter long vertical you use on 15 meters and so on. And down here, you can see in this sort of uh, first 10 degrees, the, um, the quarter wave tends to win out a little bit. But it's not a disastrous difference. It's around one and a half to two dBs in those first 10 degrees. So it's not a, not a complete deal breaker. Full wave antennas will still work you DX. I mean, I worked DX last year on 10 meters with an NFED half wave, which was 10 meters long, which gave me a tune on 10 as well as 20 meters. And I worked into the States. Ground mounted, very, very basic setup. Probably a, a maybe a one and a half to two dB loss in the transformer itself. Still made it. So when the conditions are in, the conditions are in. But in terms of optimal performance, it's not as good as the quarter wave. Now, as we progress on to a longer antenna, say one and a quarter wavelengths long, you look. Now, one and a quarter wavelengths long would be 12, 12 and a half meters long on 10 meters, for example. So it's quite a long antenna. So when we're looking at beyond a wavelength long for a vertical, we're really looking probably at the higher bands, 10, 12, 15 at the most. But you can see, look, we start to get an improvement again. So in blue, the uh, one and a quarter wave competes quite well, certainly in the first sort of five degrees with the quarter wave. Once we get beyond 10 degrees, um, it tends to slip up here a bit, but then we get these high lobes here again. But down here, look, it's not disastrously different to a quarter wave. So really long verticals can compete. And this is another one where if you just look at the, this is one and a half wavelengths now in blue, again, compared to a quarter wave in red. And again, if you just had the one in blue by itself, your eyes will get immediately drawn to these very high lobes up here. But if you look down here, there is a null here, of course, so beyond 10 degrees, between 10 and sort of 30 degrees, this antenna is a bit of a dog, right? the one and a half wavelength. But if you look at the first sort of 10 degrees, it competes relatively well with the quarter wave. And I think a lot of people, and actually I include myself in this, will just look at the pattern of the far field plot of a longer vertical and immediately come to the conclusion that because you have those high lobes, it's got to be useless for any DX. But if we consider all that data we looked at just now across three decades, it tells us that one through 10 degrees takeoff is important for DX. Even the good old one and a half wave still can do us a reasonable job 
even when we compare it to a tried and tested length like the quarter wave. Now, there is a sort of dead zone, call it the skip zone, if you like, in terms of a length of a vertical, in terms of performance, certainly against a quarter wave. And it's between sort of 0.9, really. I've got 0.97 here, but from 0.97 through to about 1.15 of a wavelength, we are at least two degrees, sorry, two dB worse than a quarter wave, which you can see up here, look, at either or both of two or five degrees off the horizon. So for example, you've got a full wave, it's just under two degrees worse, sorry, two dB, sorry, worse at two degrees compared to the quarter wave, look, minus 13, minus 15. And it's over two dB worse here at five degrees, it's minus 6.1, minus 8.4. So you can see we have this sort of dip in performance from about just under a full wave to about really about 1.2 of a wavelength long. However, our sweet spot seems to be around really from a half wave to about 0.8 of a wavelength. This is where we get some really nice performance at these low takeoff angles. The best we get is around 0.7 of a wavelength long where we are five degrees better, sorry, I keep saying that, five dB better at two degrees compared to a quarter wave, so minus 13, minus eight, and we're about over four dB better off at five degrees, that's minus 6.1, minus 1.7. And in fact, from, as I say, to be, to be specific, 0.57 of a wavelength to 0.81 of a wavelength, we are basically um, 2 dB or greater better at both 2 and 5 degrees off, off the horizon down compared with a quarter wave. So if you have a non-resonant single vertical, which you're trying to use on several bands, uh, around sort of half wave to about 0.8 of a wavelength long is where you'll have your best performance for that antenna in terms of DX, in terms of low angle radiation. And the graph here sums it up. So the bottom line is of two degrees off the horizon. You can see on the far left, if I get my cursor up here, look, this is a quarter wavelength long. Then a half wavelength, we get more gain. The graph is going up. Three quarter wave, we're kind of at our zenith or just below. It then drops down as we get to one wavelength long and comes back up again. And in fact, where are we? This is a 0.25 of a wavelength. We start to beat the quarter wave again as we get to about 1.2 wavelengths long. And it's exactly the same almost at five degrees here as well, look. So we still have that sort of dead zone, as I said earlier, between sort of 0.9 and 1.2 wavelengths long. That's where we have our dead zone. Not a massive deal breaker, we're a couple of dB down, but it is worse than a quarter wave in that sort of area. So let's look at an example before we finish. Um, you get sometimes these antennas uh, which are marketed to run with a nine to one onion and typically sort of lengths of around say 36 feet to use. So if you've got like a 12 meter pole or you can string it up a tree as a vertical or run it as a gentle sloper, these are the sorts of figures you're likely to get. And quite often these antennas are used from say 40 through 10 meters. Now you can use it, no problem at all. And we're only looking here at the uh, the takeoff um, the takeoff angles of two, five, and 10 degrees and the likely gain that you're gonna get. So in this table, I've compared these different uh, fractions of a wavelength according to 36 feet of an antenna, which is about 11 meters long, and compared it against a quarter wave. So for example, on 40 meters, this antenna is only just a bit longer than a quarter wave, so its performance is practically the same across two, five, and 10 degrees. As the antenna gets on the higher bands, becomes longer as a fraction of a wavelength, we can see, for example, on 20, 17, and 15 meters, we've got a performance now which is you know, markedly better, certainly at the lower angles, compared with a quarter wave. So, for example, a 0.7 of a wavelength, which, which, which this antenna would be on 17 meters, we are 5 dB better at 2 degrees and about 4.5 dB better at 5 degrees. Note, though, as we get into that sort of dead zone I mentioned earlier on 12 and 10 meters, where it's just under and just above a wavelength long, we are a bit worse than a quarter wave on these angles by these amounts here.
It's not a deal breaker. You can still work DX, but it's not quite as optimal, if you want to call it that, at those sort of lengths on those particular bands. So 36 feet, that's 11 meters on 12 and 10 meters gives you slightly worse performance compared to a quarter wave at low angles. But on these bands, 20, 17 and 15 meters, certainly on 17, it gives you markedly better performance. Okay, so there we are. That's a look at uh, antenna lengths and how we can help you or otherwise for DX. Uh, next time, we're going to look at how to get the best out of your non-resident multiband vertical antenna. We're going to combine the stuff we've looked at up to now on efficiency and takeoff angles for DX. And we're going to see some specific antenna lengths and to see what is the best solution we can think of for various bands. So, for example, if we're looking to do 40 through 10 or 80 through 20, what are the lengths of vertical that we think could do a reasonable job for us, taking into account not just what we've looked at today, but also antenna efficiency too. And check out those other videos, uh, which I'll uh, put in the description for you, if you want to have a look at that. 7.3, and thanks for watching, and uh, good luck with your vertical antennas too. All the best to you. Bye-bye.